Hi everybody, this is Laura. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel. Today I have a layout that I made for a punched out Thursday to die for. A punched out Thursday to die for is a hop where we use our dies and our punches to create scrapbooking layouts. Please don't forget to check out the description box where you'll find links to the other participants of a punched out Thursday to die for, Ronnie, Sue, Kathy, and Sonia. If you've watched my channel in the past, you may know that I love to combine strips of pattern paper to create scrapbooking layouts, and I love finding different ways to use strips of pattern paper on my layouts. I did not plan on using that technique on this particular layout, but then when I was looking through my Halloween papers, I found so many beautiful strips of paper, and I decided to go ahead and combine them on this piece of cardstock and create an element that's going to go on the left hand side of my layout. All of these strips of paper are from various authentic Halloween themed pads. I try to include a variety of colors. I have some black and white, I have some cream and black, and then I also have purple and orange. Earlier I inked the edges of all of the papers with Distress Ink in black soot to give them kind of a uniform look. And now I'm placing those strips down on the page. A lot of these strips of paper were already in my paper pad cut out. I had to cut a few strips of paper and then I also trimmed some of them down. I keep checking to make sure that the strips are vertical with my T-square. Some of the strips didn't seem like they were totally even, so I wanted to make sure that I didn't go too astray because I've had that happen where at the end of the process, the strips look really crooked and then that is really difficult to fix at that point. I wanted to create a mixed media background. I'm using a piece of heavyweight white cardstock. I have coated it with some Liquitex gesso. And now I'm using some bubble wrap and a variety of different sprays that I had in my stash to create an area that will go around the strips of paper and around the photo. You can see that I traced along the edge of the strip of paper and where my photo is going to go with a pencil just to give me an idea of where I would put the color. I use a number of different sprays that I had in my stash. I use two Delusion ink sprays. The colors are Mushy Peas, which I think is awesome, and Cut Grass. Then I used a Distress spray stain that's called Twisted Citron, and then a Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist called Forest Deep. These are all sprays that are different shades of green. I wanted to stick to using just one color because there are so many different colors in those strips of paper. I was afraid that it would be too busy if I had lots of different colors on the right hand side. So I decided to stick to green, but I wanted there to be a little bit of variation in the green just to make it a little bit more interesting. So I started off with the lighter colors and then I slowly worked up to the darkest color, which is the Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist. And I use a heat tool to dry each layer of color. That way the different shades don't mix together. You can see them individually, even though they're layered on top of each other. Now I'm sprinkling some water on the background and rolling paper towel on top that lifts up a little bit of the color and gives a nice water droplet effect. Now I'm adding quite a few splatters to the background. I try to get the splatters not only over the area where I have already added the color, but also along the edge of that area. The splatters are really visible because there's a white background along the edge. And then I also think that the splatters help to kind of transition the area of color into the background. So the color progresses from being more of a solid to more of a dot where the splatters are and then the white background. I added lots and lots of this Delusions color to the background, and then I used the Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist. That's the darkest color, and I added some more of those splatters, but I just added a couple of those. And then once again, I used my heat tool, and I dried the background really well. And then I added another round of water droplets, and then rolled my paper towel on top, and then that created more of a water droplet effect. I just love that effect. I think it looks really cool. 
I wanted to add some modeling paste to the background. I considered using a Halloween themed stencil like bats or spider webs, but then I came across this stencil and I'm not sure if I got this from Timu or where I got this stencil from, but I thought that it would be nice because it's just a geometric pattern. It's a little irregular. And so I thought I would give this a try. Sometimes when using modeling paste, I think the pattern is really important. It all depends on how the modeling paste is used, I think. But in this case, the modeling paste was really just to add some texture to the background. I noticed that on this layout, the modeling paste absorbed the green color quite a bit. That's probably because I had just applied a whole lot of color. And even though it was dry to the touch, it still wasn't totally dry, I'm guessing. But I didn't mind it. I thought that it added to the variation. Some areas were whiter than others. And then I used some watered down white acrylic paint and began adding some splatters to the background. And I really like adding white splatters. So I added quite a few of those all over the entire area of color. The acrylic paint takes a little bit of time to dry. So I use my heat tool for a little while. And then I got some watered down black acrylic paint and I began adding some black splatters to the background. I find that when I tap my scissors against the base that holds that little straw that has the paint on it, the splatters are very, very tiny. And then when I use my finger to do the same thing, the splatters are a little bit bigger. So I used both methods. That way I'd have some larger splatters and some smaller splatters, but most of the splatters were on the smaller side. I like to have black splatters, but I don't want them to be too large. This is the photo that I'm going to use on my layout. I've already cut a number of mats to size, as you could see. I mounted my photo on some white cardstock, and then I am going to mat that on top of the black and white pattern paper and then the black and white pattern paper is going to be mounted on top of the black and then the white mat. So I have lots of different layers here for my photo. And this is a photo of my daughter Danielle taken many years ago when we went to Salem, Massachusetts. We went to the museum that they have there called the Peabody and we took a number of pictures there. There weren't too many things in there that were Halloween themed, but I had decided that I was going to make all of the layouts in the album Halloween related just to keep it consistent. I used some dyes that I had in my stash that were spider web themed. I have a corner die that has spider webs on it. I have a larger one and then a smaller one. And I took all of these die cuts and I embossed them with some black embossing powder. The brand is Personal Stamp Exchange and the name of the color is Black Sparkle. And I heat embossed all of these die cut pieces twice and I love the glitter that's in this particular embossing powder. I'm calling this layout Boo. I think it goes really well with the picture. It almost looks like my daughter's being scared by one of the statues of, it looks like a duck that's at the museum. A while back, I found some drink stirrers after Halloween and they said boo on them. So I purchased them and then I just snapped off the bottom of the drink stirrer and I had a nice plastic title that said boo. And I've used these already on a couple of layouts and I thought it was perfect for this one as well. I want to attach down those spider webs. I'm using some gel glue and the gel glue works well to hold these pieces down, but because they're embossed and they're rather large, I did end up putting a number of heavy items from my table, whatever I could find on top of them just to make sure that they dried flat. I have a spider web to the left of the photo. So I trimmed the part of the spider web that was behind the photo off and then I used it at the bottom of the page. I used some glossy accents to attach down the title. I wasn't sure that the gel glue would hold it in place in the long run. So I love to add photo corners to my layouts. I'm using some Martha Stewart punches here. They're both corner dies that have spider webs on them. One of them cuts out a complete corner and the other one cuts an image into the paper, but you have to cut it out of the paper. And I thought I would try to use both images so that the photo corners would look a little bit different. I inked them with some black soot distress ink, and then I used ATG adhesive to attach them down to the photo. 
I was thinking that making the photo corners green might be a good choice because there's nothing else on the layout that's green, although it is a slightly different color green than what's in the background. I had also used some dyes and cut out these tiny little spiders. I embossed them with the same embossing powder that I used on the spider webs, and now I'm spreading them around the page and then gluing them down again using the gel glue. I wanted to add some bling to the layout. I put a purple jewel on the bottom of the exclamation point on the title, and then I added some small purple jewels to each of the photo corners. And then I started adding some black jewels to the layout. I add them in the centers of all of the spider webs that are on the page. I wasn't sure how well these jewels were going to hold because I'm putting them on top of an embossed surface and I wasn't sure if that was really an ideal surface to hold self-adhesive jewels, but it didn't seem that I lost too many jewels and when any jewels did come off of the layout, I used some glossy accents to hold them down. I use some scissors and I trim off any excess spider webs that I have at the edge of the page. And then I started adding some more purple jewels to the layout. I put the jewels next to the spider webs and also on the spider webs. There were three different sizes of each of these different colors of jewels. So I varied the size. I think it looks nice when there's a smaller jewel right next to a slightly larger jewel. I think that the variety of sizes adds to the interest in the page. I was just going to add the purple jewels, but then I was thinking I have to add some orange jewels. That way I'll have the colors purple and orange, which are in the strips, also on the right-hand side of the layout. I didn't have just the right color of orange in a sparkly jewel, so I had to use these matte faceted jewels, and I think that the color worked out really well. After a while, I decided I really didn't like the look of those spider web photo corners on this particular layout. I've used them on other layouts and I really liked them, but for some reason they just didn't work on this layout. So I found that I had some metal photo corners. I thought these were just the right size for the photo and I covered them with some deco art metallic luster in black shimmer. It's a wax metallic finish and it just adds a layer of color without totally covering up whatever's underneath it. And I thought that this would help the photo corners, which were a metal color, I think maybe kind of a brass, to blend in with the background. I also used some of the deco art in lavish green. I thought that having a green tint would be a nice idea, especially since I was trying to have green in another place on the layout other than the background when I had the other photo corners on the layout. Now, these photo corners were true photo corners. They have some metal tabs on the back, and this gave them a little bit of dimension that I didn't end up really liking because it just made the edges of the photo kind of bend up a little bit. So off camera, I end up adding a piece of foam behind that layer of the photo so that the photo corners wouldn't be bending up the corners that they would sit flat on the page because that whole piece would be elevated. I hope that that makes sense. And I'm sorry that I didn't record that part. I was getting ready to voice over the video and looking at the layout and I thought it just needs something else. There's one element that's missing from this layout. So I decided I was going to use some of these Sculpey skulls that I made using a Prima mold and some Sculpey. I started off by putting some gesso on them and then I used some Finnebear Art Alchemy metallic white pearl paint and I covered all three of the skulls with that. And then I used a little bit of the Finnebear Sparks in Raven Black. And I just gave a little bit of dry brushing over the top with those. Then I added the skulls in three different areas with the largest one being on top of the photo. And I used some gel glue to attach those down. I really liked those skulls, but they looked a little bit too white. And I thought I would just add a little bit of this green. I didn't want to turn them green, but I wanted there to be a little bit of shading on them other than the black that I had earlier. And then I was thinking it would make sense to add some of the black shimmer metallic luster to them, especially where they have the cavities where the eyes should be, just to give that a little bit of extra shadow. 
So I used a Q-tip and I began dabbing it on, not only on the eyes, but also in other parts of the skull. Again, just so that it didn't look super white and that it had a little bit of variation to it. I also gently rubbed the Q-tip over the teeth and that really made them look kind of old and creepy. And then I continued to dab that blackish color along the bones and on the nose and all around the skull. And that is the very last touch that I add to this layout. This layout is complete and here are some close-ups. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to take a look in the description box. As I mentioned, you'll find links to the channels of Kathy, Sonia, and Ronnie Sue, and they also create videos for a punched out Thursday to die for. I'm so lucky to be part of this collaboration. I hope that you have a fantastic day, and I hope you'll join me on my channel again soon. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.